Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com, and today we're going to make a chicken. Um, I kind of have chickens on the brain. I don't know if you can hear them or not, but I've got eight little baby ones over there in the corner, and for such tiny little creatures, they can make a lot of noise. So hopefully you'll be able to hear me over there squawking. They're just adorable, though. I will show them to you it's a little bit later, though. Um, now, the, the chicken is the very first project that I have in my book, uh, Make Animal Sculptures with Paper Mache Clay. That's actually the same book that the pig came in. Um, I started out with a really, really simple one in the book, something that you can just throw together really easily, no patterns required, um, just really simple project. And then with each project, forward every chapter it gets a little bit more difficult you're kind of building up the skills um, this I think was the third or fourth project and when you get all done to the end you can make a horse but we're going to do a chicken today it's really really easy it's going to go together really fast we're just going to use crumpled paper and masking tape for the form it's two balls one big one for the body and a little one for the head we're going to draw the um the the beak and the comb on pieces of cardboard from uh, like a cereal box and oh and, and her waddles too what are waddles for by the way <laughs> seems like a weird thing to be carrying around i don't know what that's for i called it a vintage chicken because it's not intended to look like a real one Although it would be kind of fun if if you decide to design a, a rooster to go with this chicken, I think that'd be really cool. If you do, make sure that you come back to the ultimatepapermache.com and the Daily Sculptors page because I would really like to see it. That that would just be really cool. Uh, or maybe baby little little um, vintage baby chickens to go with her. That'd be fun too. But let's get started. This is going to go really fast, so let's get to it right away. So the first thing we're going to do is make the body. It's just a big ball. And we're going to make it out of the crumpled paper. You kind of have to decide how big you want your chicken and how much room you have for your chicken. I guess. I'll see. That's a good size for a chicken. Just gonna wrap it up with the masking tape. This is actually the hard part. Um, if you're working with small kids, you're going to have to help them get the masking tape off the roll. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't mind if somebody helped me get it off the roll. It's not easy, especially when you're hanging on to the paper and trying to keep it from uncrumpling. This is one of the reasons that I quite often use. Uh, aluminum foil and hot glue now because the, when you crumple aluminum foil it doesn't immediately come undone. Now Dan Reeder, the paper mache monster and dragon guy, he's a lot smarter than I am so he tears off a whole bunch of little strips of tape before he gets started with the the um, crumpling part and I never remember to do that. You probably will but I don't. It would make an awful lot easier. This is a, a silly chicken, so you know, don't get no stress. Doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now in the book I do show you that you can put a um, like an oval of cardboard on the bottom if it doesn't want to be flat. But this time, it just almost by accident is flat, so I'm just going to skip that part. Okay, now I'm making the tail. And it's just a, um, a long strip of uh, crumpled paper kind of placed over her rear end. I just have to decide which one is her rear. I think this end. Just goes right there. Okay, we got a, a nice tail. You can do a lot with the expression of a chicken just by moving the head around. If she's got the head down here, then maybe she's talking to one of her babies, or if you put it way up here, she's um, really alert and checking things out. Maybe down here, halfway, she's sleeping. A lot of different things you can do. You can make a whole 
flock of chickens and every single one of them would be different. I think I'm going to turn her head just a little bit. That'd be kind of fun. Why not? Okay, now we have to uh, do the, the beak and the wattles and the comb. You can see we're just going to draw those on a piece of cardboard from a cereal box. Okay, let's start with the beak. That's way too long. I'm going to cut that off. Now she needs some wattles. Uh, now if you want to use paper mache clay, you do not have to use toilet paper in it. I, I know a lot of people <laughs> have avoided making any paper mache clay recently because toilet paper is like precious. Um, but you don't need the toilet paper. It's easier, but the recycled paper works just fine. So go ahead and use that instead. If you don't want to use paper mache clay at all, just use paper strips and paste. And this particular paper mache clay, well, this is actually the air dry clay recipe, but I didn't use joint compound. It was an experimental stuff. Um, so it's going to be slightly different from yours. You're, you're probably not going to want to make the experimental stuff uh, but I want to use it up, so that's what I'm going to do. If you're using paper strips and paste, you just cover it with maybe two layers is all you need. Unless you think someone is going to be throwing it on the floor. In which case, just don't let them play with your chicken. And yes, you can use the recycled paper with the air dry clay recipe too. Now I've run out of room to hang on to it, and this is something you want to do if you, anytime you're using paper mache clay and you have to quit in the middle and let it dry. Um, I'm smoothing it off on the edges and, and kind of pressing it down so that when I come back to it, the next portion can cover this part just a little bit, but without making a big bump or seam. And then, because this is going to get really, really hard, and I want some indented um, circles on there, just like I did with the original one. I'm going to have to do that now and get close to this edge, but not over it. So I'll be able to get more circles around in these parts that will be added later. Now, obviously, if you're making your chicken with paper strips and paste, you'll just paint on the circles. And you can do that with the air dry clay too. I mean, obviously you don't have to do it this way. And you don't have to make circles. I just really liked them when I made them before. So that's what I'm doing again. Now she's going to go into the oven 200 degrees or less. Never go higher than that. And I'm just going to let this get hard and I'll come back and finish her up. So it's all on there and I smooth it out as well as I could so that there's no obvious seam line. But now I've got to somehow match the circles that are already on there. Maybe one more. Now I'm going to put her back in the oven, but I want to let you know if hopefully everybody is still watching because I should have said this earlier. You do not have to put this in the oven. It's not like um, polymer clay where it needs to be baked. I'm just drying it out faster. That's all because I'm kind of in a hurry and I want to get it done. Okay, I can't stand it. I'm going to show you these guys. This is a really easy brooder. I just made it with cardboard taped to an old metal tabletop that I had down in the basement. Look at that little guy trying to fly. Is that cute? They're only three days old. So I left her in the oven for maybe two, three hours. I had a little something else to do. <laughs> and that brings me to a news flash. And my daughter came out to help me move the lumber for my chicken coop out of the front yard and into the garage. It was kind of heavy. 
And she told me when she was here that in her next installment of her uh, live painting that she's doing on her own channel, she's going to paint me working on a sculpture, which I just think is so fun. She hasn't told me which one she's going to be working on yet. It's a total surprise, so I just can't wait to see it. She's got a brand new channel. She doesn't have any mini subscribers yet, so I do hope that you'll help her out. Go over to her channel, subscribe, um, do whatever you do on this channel to make sure that YouTube likes us, like commenting, subscribing, hitting the like button, you know, all that stuff. And that way, as soon as she gets a thousand subscribers, she can monetize her channel which would just be really cool and she's been working so hard on it so go check that out um we'll all be watching that one together <laughs> i think that's just really going to be fun now let's get this girl painted now the first thing i told us to do is to use a the homemade gesso the drywall junk compounding glue i'm in kind of a hurry and i don't care if this is an, has an absolute white background, so I'm just going to go straight to painting it. And the first color that we want to paint it is just a warm white. I used smaller spots on the original, as you can see. I think I used a toothpaste a lid when I did that. So this one's going to be slightly different, but that's okay. Now obviously you can make your vintage chicken any color you want too. This is a um, playful chicken. You can make a purple if you want to. You could even get really carried away and give her some feathers. But I'm not going to. I'm going to go for the spots because I really like it. Now the book does have recipes for all the colors that I used before. But I think this time I'm actually going to cheat a little bit with colors that I just already have. I think that would make a nice combination. Any combination will work. I, whatever would fit in with your uh, your kitchen or wherever you're going to put it so we got kind of a peachy color it's called tropic orange for no apparent reason i've got cadmium red light hue and i've got some naples yellow i'll use the yellow on the beak and i'll use the cadmium red on the wattles and the um, the top part The comb. Can't remember the name of it all of a sudden. <laughs> okay. Now we need to tone down that color just a little bit. I haven't added the black eye yet, but I will do that in a minute. But first I want to tone it down. I think I kind of messed up by not using the uh, that olive green. Just having a little bit of the cooler color might have worked better. I don't know. It's still kind of cute. So let's, oops, let's put that over there. We're going to use a glaze using the satin glazing liquid from Golden. Love this stuff. And some burnt umber. And it's just going to go on and get taken off again and just leave a, just a, a very light bit of color everywhere over uh, the chicken and just kind of bring all the colors together, hopefully. We don't want very much brown. And I'm going to go get my uh, paper towel just a little bit wet on one end so if I put too much on in a place I can get it off again with a wet towel. Now the purpose of the of the glazing liquid, instead of using just plain water, is that it slows down the drawing a lot so that you can put it on like this and then wipe it off like I'm going to do in just a second here. And just leave it so that it has a, a little bit darker where I indented it with that cap. I'd already done this part here and then I added that and there's no line that you would get if it dried really, really fast, which acrylic paint has a tendency to do. You can take off as much as you want to. If you really hate it, you can just use that um, the wet towel and wipe all of it off.
Now I need to make a little teeny spot of reflection. Gosh, those are so small. I'm not sure I can do that. Let me go see if I can find a pin maybe to get some white on those eyes without totally covering them up. Hang on for a second. I found a needle. Let's see if this works. Got some white on it. <laughs> it's about as small as you could get. <laughs> so the chicken is finished. It went really fast and it would have gone a lot faster if I hadn't been quite so distracted with a few other things. Uh, like those little guys cheeping over in the corner and starting to freak out about the fact that they don't have a coop yet. But it still got done really quick and it's really easy to do. Now if you've made one of these, I really hope that you come back to the ultimatepapermache.com and click on the Daily Sculptors page because we have so many really cool things there that our people are showing off and we want to see yours too. So, so come on over, uh, upload a photograph, just hit that great big yellow button so that you can tell us about it and we would all just really love to see what you've made. So go on, go make something now <laughs> and then come visit me, ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.